for introduction. Actually, uh, thank you, Lavinia, for slipping me in at the last, at the very last moment. And, um, and I'm very glad to give, uh, give a talk on my on my research and uh, to discuss with you guys. Um, so the, my, I'm going to talk about this uh, <coughs> this nonlinear solution of scalar gravity by gravity, and this is based on work with uh, Alfred and Maya. <coughs> And it's actually in work in progress, and uh, I'm hoping to uh, publish this one soon. So I think I essentially had minus one minute for my talk. Um, so maybe I can skip to my summary, but then that would make me sad a little bit. So please bear me for a few minutes. I'll try to be quick so that, uh, not, so that not to delay the reception um, time too much. So this is how my talk. I will, I will do a brief interaction, and then I'll talk about the model I'm considering. And this uh, mentioned the linear instability in the model. And then um, I'll talk about the nonlinear effects coming from the scalar graphon. And then I'll do I'll, I'll summarize. So introduction. I dare to skip this slide. The only point here is the the, the three people, the Deron, uh, Gaudas, and Tolly, um, constructed a free nonlinear massive gravity with uh, without uh, p degrees or six degree of freedom. So that's the only point of the slide. And then. The, in that theory, the, the additional material case we knew is actually non dynamical. So the, the one sort of the straightforward extension is that to promote that this F mu to be dynamical. Um, so you add you add the, the Einstein Hubert uh, Hubert action for this additional metric. And the, the gravity part of action looks like this. And then the mass term, the original mass term is essentially the uh, mixing term between the uh, physical and visual uh, visual features, and the, the in this in this system there are several degrees of freedom: one massless graviton and uh, one massive graviton. And this setup, or uh, the by gravity, um, <coughs> which is shown that uh, it allows the FLRW solutions for all types of FLRW solutions with uh, self acceleration. Now the so the model, uh, so the, that, that was gravity part I just briefly mentioned. And um, now, the, now the model I'm <coughs> going to talk about is, the, it is, is in such a way that the, there are two matters, and, uh, but each of which, um, each matter coupled to only one of the measures. So this is the actual action for the, for the physical, uh, physical sector, and this is that of the potential um, graviton, and this is my in term. And this one couples to only G, and this guy couples only to F. And coupling in that way um, guarantees or well, preserves the, the fracture of the bus mixing term and doesn't introduce, doesn't reintroduce the, the BD goals. So that, that's nice. So there is still there is no six degree of freedom in the in the graviton um, in the graviton mode. And um, I. <coughs> Well, I'm interested in the cosmological application, and to do to do it, the, the I will make a um, simplif one simplifying answers. So, well, first of all, the cosmological application. So, the I assume the both of the background matrix to be equal <laughs> to So, this the n is n is the n and n f for the Laps functions for the um, for for the physical and the potential. Sectors and the A and AF are the scale factors. Now, the continuity equation for the mass term um, <coughs> gives the constraint such that this equation has to satisfy in the background. And um, so, essentially, either this one or or this one has to vanish. But uh, taking this one to be zero uh, makes a lot of problems. Uh, essentially, they know that the, the, it reduces the the uh, nonlinear. Um, Nonlinear, nonlinear goals that are not that are neither, neither BD goals or Higgs goals. So we take this to be zero. Um, but instead of, <coughs> instead of taking just this whole thing to be zero, the, we just assume that this guy to be zero. So k equal to L. K is the, the uh, ratio between the um, uh, between the scale factors, and L is the ratio <coughs> between the mass functions. So if you set this to be zero, that means k dot has to be zero. And um, it is essentially, so it is essentially forcing the, this the fiducial, background fiducial metric to be proportional to, uh, proportional <coughs> to the, the physical uh, background metric with constant proportionality. 
So this actually simplifies. This this is just some answers, and this is very. This actually simplifies the calculation a lot. Now, sorry for this GD slide, um, but uh, essentially, the this okay. We call this homothetic answers. Um, sorry, just an assumption because uh, it makes things easier, or there is a, a deeper motivation for that. Um, no, as far as I can tell, it's, it's simplifying assumptions. Um, it actually, when, okay, I'm going to discuss the, the nonlinear effect, but if you, if, when I do that calculation, the, if I don't assume that, it's, the calculation becomes very messy. And, but at least, uh, but at least this answer is uh, the uh, attractive solution when the, um, against, uh, against small populations. Anyway, so this, uh, with these answers, the um, actually, the two sectors, the physical and physical sectors, are evolved in a very simple or identical manner. So, if you look at the continuity equation for uh, for the for the phys uh, uh, physical matter and the physical matter, um, as you can see, they they evolve uh, they evolve identically. And so that's well, that made that made us <coughs> call, call them uh, three matters. And well, and also the gravity uh, gravity sector, background gravity sectors evolve. In that in the identical way, and that's up to different point mass, and that's sort of why we, well, my collaborators decided to call this homothetic uh, process. So, so, some, so, are you assuming the same equation to be parameter for the two mother sectors? Yeah. So the essentially the in principle, so the, this laps and this laps can be different. No, no. I mean the equation to set parameter. So what if, if the first matter is dust? <laughs> And uh -huh. the second one will be dust also? Or uh, no, no, not, not, not necessarily. We, well, we assume they both of them are dust, but, uh, but what I mean is that as long as if you give the initial conditions, it's still both the same way. So that, that's all I mean. So basically, the question is whether there is any dynamical uh, constraint or any yes. these two method proportions. Exactly. Is, exactly. is there any, any dynamical <laughs> constraint? So, uh, dynamical constraint? The mother sector, I mean. Uh, both is it? So metrics are proportional. So 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 the this at least this uh, this uh, this solution is uh, is a, is an attractor solution. Well, I I just uh, briefly mentioned. But so the at least if you start from um, a little bit far away from this uh, from this answers, then you you go to you go to the solution. I don't know if it's if it's you. I don't know what happens if you start from uh, very far away uh, from this answers, but uh, it goes to as long as if you start. Yeah, but yes. If you just look at the F and G equations, yes. when you set F and G proportional to each other, yes. the equations tell you that the stress energy tensor of the two matters also must be proportional to each other. The T mu of chi of G uh -huh. becomes equal to T mu of chi of F with a proportional. Up to, up to, up to, exactly. yes, up to uh, constant, yes. So that condition is satisfied by your solution. Exactly. So um, okay, so some previous results show that uh, the, this uh, this solution is an attractor, and there are actually two uh, solutions: the sector solution and the matter domination. Uh, matter domination. The for larger range of the parameter space, this one is the attractor, but uh, this one can still be an attractor. So the um, in this setup, the 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 well, that matter well something. Um, that, that is usually related to that matter can be explained. For example, dialectic rotation curve and the structure formation. However, if you consider, if you want to, if you want that theory to expansion, um, in this setup, with the explanation to the uh, to the uh, to the that matter kind of thing, then you have you need uh, you need a severe fine tuning. So essentially, the, the because of because of these things, the. Um, the quantum wavelength of the um, effective gravitational mass has to be smaller than the capacity. Then, if you want accelerated expansion, you have to fine tune the cutting constant or the hierarchy between the point masses uh, very severely. But, okay, well, and <laughs> that's, that's sort of the, the um, um, drawback, of, uh, drawback, but uh, as long as, if you, if you sort of allow the, this, uh, this uh, fine tuning, then this can essentially explain the both of the dark matter and dark energy. Um, the, um, okay, so it is okay. It has been shown that uh, in this setup, in the bi this by gravity theory, as long as the effective uh, gravitational mass is greater than the h, half of parameter, then perturbations are stable against uh, in the homogeneous and isotropic background. 
Um, so this means that it is stable at present. However, of course, if you go back in time, h becomes bigger. So the, there appear the, the linear instabilities at, at earlier times uh, when h, h is greater than effective rapid mass. So there is, a, uh, there, is a, there is an instability. Um, um, so, so it was a uh, linear instability. And um, we, well, so that, um, that instability is in the scalar graphon sector. And um, when A is greater than uh, graphon mass. And um, the, we, we considered the possibility that, that if, you, if you take into account the nonlinear effects of the scalar graphon, the spectrum may change. So the, this is what I'm going to talk about, and that's my main um, topic of this talk. The, uh, okay. Sorry, yes. just a quick question. Uh, this is very naive, but I was under the impression that if you are on this branch that you're talking about, that you're essentially setting your effective gravity mass to zero. Uh, what do you mean? No. Then what is the effect of it? Yeah, yeah, but, but, okay, so, okay, so if you go to the sitter, okay, so set the magic to zero, then definitely what you have set to zero on your branch there becomes the graph mass. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, sorry, I, I... Okay, do you have, yeah, what's the, what is the effect of graph mass? Effective, okay. The, your MF. Okay, so it's a, it's a combination. It's a, it's a combination of the, the coupling constants in the mass term and also the, the ratio between the, the between the scale factors. Okay, but and it's also, not the same. Also, and also the bare graph mass. Yeah, but it's not the same as the combination that you set to zero by picking the branch. <coughs> because no. on the center. No, no, no. 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 <coughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can discuss it yeah. later. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. When you talk about this uh, early time instability, which one do you have in mind? <coughs> uh, well, yes, I think that, well, it's, it's going to be great, very great instability, I think. The, the, in some uh, equation of state, it, it may become, the, well, the, uh, um, the, for some equation of state, then, then the, the ghost may appear as well, but uh, I'm, Essentially, here I'm talking about the gradient instability. Uh, okay. This is the same as this is the Ricci bound? Yes. Yes. It, it's, it's, uh, it's essentially the Hitchi ghost. I mean, if, it, if it's ghost, then if it's gradient instability, it's not, it's not the ghost, but the, 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 with some equation state, the, the, the ghost appears. That ghost is equivalent to the Hitchi ghost. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you take the reasonable equation state do have uh, a gradient instability. So there is no ghost, but there is a gradient yes. instability and a Yes, this is the exactly. Sure. exactly. Okay, so okay, so the I, I, I just want to consider the nonlinear effects in this setup. And um, I focus on the massive uh, massive scalar graph because that's a bad guy. And um, to simplify the, to further simplify calculations, the I assume the spherical symmetry with uh, with acceleration. Expansion. And this, uh, this simplifies the calculation and also is uh, convenient to sing sorry, single out the um, scalar sector. Scalar <coughs> the scale of interest, um, scale I'm interested in, is this, the sub horizon scale. And um, so, so the uh, scale smaller, much smaller than the, the half of horizon. And then I'm, I'm considering the regime. The age greater than point mass, uh, sorry, the effective graph of mass. So that means computer wavelength is larger than horizon scale. This is a this is a regime I I have in mind, and I parameterize the sub horizon um, sub horizonness by this epsilon factor, um, essentially the radius times h. So that's much greater than one. And uh, when I say spherical symmetric solution with with uh, well, with the setup I I have is essentially the decomposing the, the metric in this way. So, so phi g, uh, phi g, psi g, uh, phi f, and psi f are the, the uh, Newtonian potentials in the, in the GR sense. And also, I introduce the 
Essentially, this uh, this coordinate system tau g and r g tau is tau is equal to one time, and tau g r g tau f and r f they carry perturbations of law. And so this tau uh, tau g tau f r g r f are, um, is essentially well similar to the slope of the trip, um, in the sense that it pre uh, they preserve the structure of the uh, isoactive adaption. <coughs> and so. Okay, so these these variables are functions of the coordinates tau and uh, tau and r. Uh, are there are there cross terms between d tau Sorry? and dr? Sorry? Are there cross terms between d tau and dr? D tau, uh, d, d, d tau and dr. Well, yeah, yeah through through the through the mass term, there is mixing. I'm saying in the metrics. So, I mean, you, it seems like you're picking Newtonian gauge for both metrics. Um, this is I haven't done any gauge fixing yet. Right? This this okay. is a interesting. I have I have four. I have four um, uh, scalar scalar perturbations in one okay for each of the each of the guys, but I haven't set any gauge yet. Hmm? Yeah, both diagonal. Well, in the sense that tau g and r g. However, the tau g tau g and r g are function of tau and r. So the actually there there are mixing terms oh. if you write down in. Okay. So okay. So all right. So that uh, I have, now, I now have the ten perturbations: the pi psi, delta tau, delta r, and delta t. And delta tau and delta r are essentially the difference between this sort of the real, or I don't know what what they call it, real, well, effective uh, um, the coordinates. Well, the difference between this this coordinate and the uh, well, this variable, talk about variables, and the and the coordinates. <coughs> Okay, so um, <coughs> to consider nonlinear uh, nonlinearity, uh, I assume that we can we about we decompose. We assume that we can decompose all the perturbations into two pieces. One is the adiabatic part, and the, <coughs> the other is also the part. So essentially, this adiabatic part is something that's oh there is no line here, but this is time. And the adiabatic adiabatic um, uh, adiabatic mode changes slowly, essentially the uh, cosmological time scale. And the also every one is changing fast. So that's uh, we decompose all the perturbations that way. And so essentially the adiabatic mode is a time average of all of the of the perturbations. And the authority mode is the propagating gradient mode or propagating uh, degrees of freedom. On top of on top of the on top of this the average. Okay. Would you consider all the spherical symmetric uh, excitations? Yes, because, yeah, yes. Oh, well, what's the difference? We did it now, like, a couple of years ago, we worked about the stability of uh, Bianchi models, in very gravity. And we consider all Bianchi types, and it's more general than just spherical symmetry. And all of them run into proportional backgrounds. So all of them are stable. So I can um, well, I I don't know I don't I don't know much about the detail of that work. We can can we discuss it later? Okay. <coughs> I guess I'm yeah I'm spending too much time. So anyway, so the uh, what say? so now so the ideal modes there are ten, there are ten modes, and uh, I do gauge fixing, taking delta tau g uh, the physical sector to be zero ideal mode. And then I assume the small amount of operations and also the small de uh, deviation from the equal RW background. And, um, but we do not assume that this demonstration of the delta tau f, delta tau r, to be small. So this can be all the one. Then, then uh, the, okay, so if you look at the, um, Okay, so essentially, the, if you look at the nonlinear uh, non solutions in this for this adiabatic idea, mode, you find, or we found, um, so the, there are three branches of uh, branches of solutions. One is the, the trivial one. Um, uh, so one is the one, one is the standard standard W solution, and there are sorry, this is actually mu plus minus, and um, so. This and also <coughs> the, there are two other solutions which is order one. 
And um, on the other hand, these time variables, time perturbations, um, are actually part of you. This, this uh, result, uh, the motivation due to the Nomini effect is actually small. So this is order x on squared, which is this a, a times r times h squared. <coughs> So the nonlinearity in the in this delta uh, R F is order one, and um, in the in time coordinates is order epsilon squared. And so all the calculations uh, are consistent only up to epsilon square order. And so what so so far what I have is the because of the nonlinear uh, nonlinear interactions, the physical um, physical sector doesn't doesn't change because we set the uh, gauge in that way. And, uh, but the judicial sector is modified, the FLW is modified by order one factor, and yeah, order one factor, and there is a, a small deviation from that guy as well. Now, the, then we analyze the stability of the, the, the propagating gravitational modes. So again, there are, 10 of, there are 10 of them. So this one is, uh, this one is the guys, uh, these ones are the ones that also that change a lot in the very fast. And we assume this guy, so we do the linear analysis for this guy on top of the on top of the the background given by the um, adivide moves. So again we focus on the the um, the scalar graph modes and and we set the gauge but we ignore these perturbations, and we set the gauge such that all of the all of the, the oscillating perturbations, well, sorry, all of the scalar gradients are uh, I don't know, right, but delta delta tau g and delta tau delta r g. So then I will okay. Then um then we did the we. Uh, we looked at the quadratic action of, the, of this uh, propagating graph in the physical gradual modes, and there is only one degree of freedom. So the delta RG and delta R, uh, tau G related to the scalar gradual in this way, or related to each other in this way, and we write down the quadratic action for this uh, scalar gradual pi S, and then we find that uh, this Ks and uh, Cs squared, Ks is a kinetic term, and Cs is the sum speed of <coughs> the scalar graph. So in the mean equal to zero sector, this is just standard result, uh, standard of the RW background result. And when for the mu is with plus minus, the, so this is order one, the, this is order one modulation, and so Ks is actually modified by order one factor, and um, the yeah, compared to the compared to the original one, and also the CS is modified in at order one. And um, okay, so this is actually this is still a preliminary result. Um, but uh, our pre uh, our preliminary result is sort of um, saying that well, we have we still have to check, but it seems like uh, for any value of W, at least there is one branch that is stable. Um, but it's still preliminary, so please don't take my words um, just as it is. Anyway, so that's what we found. Um, okay, so we considered the bigravity with the, uh, with two models, each of each of which couples to only one of the metrics. And it, the, with some fine with with fine tuning, um, we can. Oops, something is wrong. This one should be here. But anyway, so the it. It, it has some attractive features uh, in phenomenology, but in some cases in the other universe. So we consider the nonlinear interaction and the found solutions uh, for subrising scales. And essentially, the, there there are branches that liberate the um, the instabilities. But um, the remaining issues are okay. We found solutions, but so what? So <laughs> the we don't yet know whether they are actually, you know, connected uh, smoothly um, when H becomes order uh, effective graph mass. Uh, we may, so the mechanism to smoothly connect the two, two regions, uh, we still have to study. And also the, okay, the vector model was safe, so I, I think there is no problem in vector mode as well, but maybe the nominee, nominee effect uh, um, uh, 
course, some problem in the vector, uh, vector smooth as well. So we have to check. That's all. <laughs>